Welcome to the WHHI TV Daily News. I'm Betsy McDaniel. As always, there's a lot to cover today, so we'll get started with our headlines. Alec Murdoch's lawyers don't trust the state law enforcement division, but that's exactly who the attorney general has ordered to investigate the allegations of jury tampering we've been talking about all week. Murdoch's attorneys say that SLED has a conflict of interest in interviewing jurors because numerous SLED agents testified for the prosecution in the trial. But the attorney general's office says the state's only vested interest is in seeking the truth, and they are confident SLED will do just that. Thus far, two jurors have told Murdoch's lawyers that court clerk Becky Hill made inappropriate comments asking jurors their opinions during the trial. The Low Country has lost another of its legends. Ethel Rivers was believed to be the oldest resident of Hilton Head Island when she passed earlier this week, just five weeks shy of her 105th birthday. Imagine what she's seen on the island from the days before it was developed at all until now. She was the mother to 17 children and the grandmother to 46. She was known for her zest for life and for travel, visiting Washington, D.C. as recently as 2016. Her philosophy of life was to be good to each other, have trust in the Lord, and treat people the way you want them to treat you. As Hurricane Lee turns well out into the Atlantic, damage assessments from Idalia continue onshore, including measuring the loss of sea turtle nests. Hilton Head Island's nests came out from the storm much better than most. The Sea Turtle Patrol reports that about two-thirds of the nests had already hatched on the island. And only two nests were lost, with a dozen more possibly spoiled, but still potentially viable. But from Edisto Beach north to Georgetown, roughly 600 nests were lost to the storm. Does it feel like it's been 22 years? Well, we'll always remember where we were on September 11, 2001. We vowed then to never forget, and folks in Bluffton and on Hilton Head are not, commemorating the attacks on America at the Veterans Memorial in Buckwalter Place Park in Bluffton and at the Veterans Park in Shelter Cove, both at 8.30 Monday morning. Bluffton's ceremony will feature speakers ranging from Rabbi Brad Bloom to Reverends Therese Lee and John Black, while Hilton Head's ceremony will feature Michael Sturgis, a retired New York City Fire Department battalion chief who was in the middle of it all that fateful day. Now that the bulk of summertime tourists are gone, the town of Hilton Head will begin building a brand new boardwalk at Follyfield Beach Park beginning Monday. Parking and access to the park will be shut down during construction, which the town hopes will be done before Thanksgiving. The current boardwalk has, seen, has been in service for over 30 years. Beachgoers are urged to visit one of the other six beach parks on the island. And we tell you it was a great night to check out high school football, but most of our area schools are not playing at home. Battery Creek hosted May River last night. Hilton Head High plays host to Wilson, and John Paul II hosts Memorial Day. But Buford High, Christian Academy, Hilton Head Prep, Thomas Hayward, Buford Academy, and Cross Schools are all on buses later today. Road trip, anyone? The media sources on your screen will have more on these and other stories, and we would love for you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at WHHITV. And if you have an idea for a news story, we'd love to hear it, so drop us a line at news at WHHITV.com. And now here's Maria with a look at our weather. Thanks, Betsy. Yep, so first, an update on Hurricane Lee. It does look like it's headed to the northeast, but that doesn't mean it's not going to impact us here in the low country. All next week, we're going to see quite a bit of rain, and we're going to see a lot of rip current and rough surf warning. So if you're going to get in the water, do be careful. Taking a look at this weekend, again, we are going to see quite a bit of storms. Saturday is supposed to be sunny to partly cloudy in the morning, but then we are going to see some heavy scattered thunderstorms throughout the afternoon and going into the evening. Hillnets give a high of 84, a low of 75. Bluffton's give a high of 86, a low of 72. And Buford's give a high of 84 and a low of 74. Come Sunday, it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy again in the morning, but then we are going to see those thunderstorms again in the afternoon and going into the evening. Hillnets give a high of 86, a low of 74. Bluffton's give a high of 87, a low of 71. And Buford's give a high of 86 and a low of 72. The sunrise for this weekend is going to be at 7.03 and sunset is going to be at 7.37. Taking a look at the beach tides, Saturday low tide is going to be at 12.47 p.m. and high tide is going to be at 5.51 p.m. And then come Sunday, low tides can be at 1.39 p.m. and high tides can be at 6.51 p.m. Taking a look into next week, Monday we're going to see scattered thunderstorms throughout the day and possibly going into the evening. Highs in the 80s, lows in the 70s. Come Tuesday, it's going to be cloudy in the morning, but then we are going to see those showers again in the afternoon. And then it should be clearing up by the evening. Highs in the 80s, lows in the 70s. And then come Wednesday, it's going to be partly cloudy again in the morning with thunderstorms throughout the afternoon. But again, should be clearing up by the evening. Highs in the 80s, lows in the 70s. That's it for today. Let's head it back to the desk. Thanks, Maria. After a quick break, we check in with Marcus Tanner to see what's the latest with Second Helpings. Don't go away.